Thanks for watching Afternoon Live. Okay, what color are the floors in your home? Our next guest says choosing gray flooring is one of the first mistakes homeowners make. Here to tell us more, we welcome celebrity interior designer Bilal Rahman. Thank you for joining us, Bilal. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I love your very sassy takes online about <laughs> interior design, but you're here to help us avoid making these mistakes for a better future for all of our interiors. Absolutely, that's what I'm here for. So let's talk about top three things to make your home, that could make your home look a little bit on the more inexpensive side, starting with the, the gray floors. What's up with that? Yeah, this has been a huge controversial topic, but <laughs> um, gray hardwood floors are just the worst option because gray hardwood doesn't actually exist in nature. And so it's it's very easy to tell that it was a man-made material and it's trying to emulate a natural material. And also a lot of builders around the country have started putting gray hardwood floors in all of their new builds and their flips. And so when something becomes so mass market like that, it immediately starts to lose its value and its specialty. So stay away from the gray hardwood floors. There are thousands of other options that you can go for. Okay, let's talk about furniture sets. A lot of people go this direction because it seems convenient. What are your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely not. I know it's convenient <laughs> to walk in and buy a room, but at the end of the day, it doesn't feel curated or designed or collected. It just feels like a bedroom set. And at the end of the day, why would you want it to feel kind of like a big box store when for the same price and just a little bit more effort, you could have a very well curated space. Yeah, you can find some really beautiful things thrifting or in consignment. It just takes maybe a few more minutes, as you said, and mass produced art, a very, kind of a similar story there, right? Oh my gosh, yes. Mass produced art literally defeats the purpose of art. Art is supposed to be original and unique and it doesn't have to be of a lot of monetary value, but it just needs to be something special that really speaks to you and, and resonates with who you are and what you like. And mass produced art just doesn't do that. Like these pieces, for example, they really don't tell any story. I don't know anybody who can look at that and say, I connect with it because it, it's, there's nothing to connect with. So instead just go out and find something from a local artist or a small artist or a vintage shop, something that really, really resonates with you and your personal style. Yeah, it will be a lot more special to come home and, and know that those things are of value to you that you do, do have hung on your wall. Speaking of signs with the sayings on them, like live, laugh, love, that's very popular right now. That's a big no-no. Just <laughs> burn down the house at that point. If you have those, <laughs> those are terrible. I feel like uh, word art just doesn't, like I said earlier, it has no value and you can find so many different options everywhere else uh, for artwork. And you, you don't need instructions on where the bathroom is or where the laundry room is or where your kitchen <laughs> is. Like, you know where those rooms are. They don't need a label, I promise you. We just stayed in a rental beach home and it said eat in the kitchen. And we were all thinking, yeah, sure, okay, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, what else are you going to do in that space? Obviously. Okay, let's talk about curtains, what to do and what not to do. Yes, the biggest mistake everybody makes with curtains is that they hang them way too short. So the rule with curtains is that you want it you want it to go all the way from the floor to the ceiling. So if you have eight foot ceilings or nine foot ceilings, really make sure that your panels go the entire length of the ceiling to the floor because it's gonna make your space feel taller and grander. When you drop them down just above the window and have them go to the floor instead, that just shortens your room and almost creates a visual line throughout this space. And that's not what you want. Okay, that makes a big difference too. Let's talk about people doing a DIY faux countertop. You're not a fan. Not a fan. This was a huge trend that came around during COVID. Everybody got tired of their houses and didn't want to spend the money on changing their countertops. So they started putting these vinyl stickers on their countertops. But the problem with it is that those stickers are not meant to be used in a kitchen. So over time, they just get really gross and nasty and they start peeling and lifting and you're not fooling anybody. It's not real marble. We know it's not real marble. It might be better to just keep what you have and design around that if you can't afford to change it than to try to cover it up with a sticker that's going to you know, look terrible after the first time you use it next to your stove. That's a great point, especially with you think about how much we use our kitchens every single day, that wear and tear, it just happens so quickly. So speaking of that, you have some other ideas of countertop materials to avoid. Tell me about laminate. Oh man, <laughs> laminate. <laughs> Laminate is notorious for being cheap. And I'm so sorry, but laminate countertops are the worst. They scratch, they get messed up, they chip. 
and they just look like plastic, like it looks like a doctor's office. Why would you want to use that material in your kitchen? Instead, there's so many other options that you could go for, like quartz or porcelain or even a natural stone if you have the budget for it, and just elevate your space. I mean, at, at the end of the day, like you said, we use our kitchen on a daily basis. So don't you want to feel as good as you possibly can in your space? Even if you end up spending the same amount of money as laminate, you can definitely get a better look. That's a great point. So speaking of, a lot of people have gone for concrete recently. What are some of the pitfalls with that? So concrete aesthetically is really cool and I'm really into it, but uh, in terms of functionality and maintenance, it's really a nightmare. So concrete countertops have the tendency to crack uh, a lot with humidity or tension, or if you have an earthquake or whatever, they the material just isn't built to be a countertop that you're using on a daily basis like this. And so aesthetically, it's amazing. But for a day-to-day -day life, unless it's a kitchen you really don't use, or it's you know in a part of a home that's not as important as your main kitchen, I would stay away from countertops. That and then what about stainless steel as well? Stainless steel is really cool, and it kind of gives you this industrial, commercial kitchen feel. But the problem with it is that it scratches and it dents. So people don't realize that, yes, they use it in a commercial kitchen, and it's durable. But the reason they use it in the commercial kitchen is because they're denting it, and they're scratching it, and people are beating up on it. So if you put it in your home, it's going to behave the same exact way. And after a year of using it, it's not going to look that great with kids and, and your daily use. You've made some great arguments, Bilal. We love all your hot takes. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. We'll have more information on our website at katu.com. We'll be right back with more Afternoon Live right after this.